next on All Access. Up the middle, run by Stevenson, a cut left out of a tackle. Gone to the 10, gone to the 5, gone to the end zone. Touchdown, Patriots! You ever remember being that wide open? I do not. It was, uh, it was a good scheme, man. Portland, Oregon is very brainy, <laughs> uh, cloudy, but uh, you can't love the sunshine if you don't let it rain. So I kind of, this is where I grew up and just appreciating where I grew up. Here comes a guy right here uh, to try to get into the blocking, and that would be Fields, the quarterback. So oh. talk about speed. We'll get to him later. Okay. Two in a row, look at them go, as the Patriots climb to 500 on the season. Hello and welcome to Patriots All Access, presented by Geico. I'm Steve Burton. Strong in all three phases, New England handled Cleveland with ease for their second win in a row. They'll look to make it three in a row with a Monday night matchup against the Chicago Bears. We'll preview that game, but before we do, let's look back at the sights and sounds from the very satisfying win in Cleveland. Mills runs it right across the field, 45. Upfield inside the 40-yard line. And he's tackled by 
Super. His second interception of the season. Oh, it's not a lead. It's a Jackson. It's not a lead, baby. Same one, bro. Jackson's the word, bro. Zappi with a play fake and a deep drop. Throws it near side, wide open. Henry at the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Waltzing into the end zone. Touchdown, Patriots! Set dropping back, pressure to get oh, taken away by Carl Davis, rumbling to the 15, Davis oh. to the 10, and the big man is knocked off his feet. This team's the big having man fun. just took the football away from Jacoby Brissett. Thornton sweeping to the left, taking the hand off, yeah, to the 10, he's gone indeed. Touchdown, the second of the day for the Patriots rookie. Patriots roll over Cleveland 38 to 15 and another win in the distinguished career, a career unlike any other head coaches for Bill Belichick. Thank you. It's great. Yeah, yes, it's a good, it's a big weekend for me. So it's oh, a yeah. good present. I know, I saw. Congrats. Yeah. Second half, you know, we talked about going out there and playing playing some good football. We didn't really do it to start the game. I mean, not bad, but you know, too many penalties kind of stopped ourselves and got to go in the second half. And played more the way we're capable of playing. So again, we can work towards that for 60 minutes. We're gonna be all right. That's a hell of a job today, coming back, playing some good football again taking better care of the ball, all right, playing with good fundamentals. There's still a lot of things we can clean up and, and do a little bit better on, coach better, play better, all right, but we're starting to make some progress here. Slate, you got it, man. We always got to return to the love that we have for this game, fellas. Never lose that. You can't take this game for granted. Nothing is guaranteed. And as much as we talk about winning and losing, and that's important, trust me, you got to maintain your love for this game, fellas. If you do that, you'll be the best version of yourselves. This team will be the best version of itself. Love y'all, though. Definitely love y'all. How we feel about coming here and beating them Cleveland Browns? Coming up on All Access. Bill Belichick breaks down some of the key plays in the win over Cleveland. This is really a great play by uh, Duggar. Yeah. Uh, Duggar's actually, you know, a couple steps behind here, he, and, and as he closes to the receiver. And later, we introduce you to the many sides of Patriots receiver Kendrick Bourne. I felt the love, man, and to get the fans to support me and help me get, get better every day. You're watching Patriots All Access. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of the New England Patriots. By Ace Ticket, where New England fans go for tickets to all their favorite events. Visit aceticket.com. By Pepsi, Patriots watching, better with Pepsi. And by Putnam Investments. Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots, proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off. Welcome back. Time now for the plays of the week. Uh, Coach Belichick joins me again. Coach, big win against the Browns. Let's take a look, and it starts right here with uh, your defense. Yeah, second play of the game. Uh, we kick off, and um, Browns on the second play of the game run a bootleg pass here. This uh, uh, Brissett rolling out to the defensive left, and, and uh, this is uh, Wise uh, recognizing the play, starting to put some pressure on Brissett here. Uh, Phillips has the, the tight end who's kind of leaking out here into the flat, and um, you can see Kyle Duggar here taking the, the uh, flag route. And so there's the options right there. Uh, pressure on the quarterback and really a two-man route here. This is really a great play by uh, Duggar. Yep. Uh, Duggar's actually, you know, a couple steps behind here. And, and as he closes to the receiver. Can't find the ball. He, now he's got to find it. And now he's got to turn and look for the ball. And, and uh, you know, very athletic play to turn, find, locate. Uh, and catch the ball. Maybe the ball's a little longer too if Wise doesn't get there. And you know, you look at Dietrich's snaps, 
He's playing over 90% of the snaps for you defensively. His stamina is fantastic. He's in great condition, plays hard all the time, okay. and, and works hard in practice. So, uh, yeah, he's been able to keep it going all year. All right, moving on here. Uh, right before the half, well, it's three minutes before the half here. We're in a third and ten situation, and that's an interesting play here where the Browns uh, put all their uh, six guys up on the line of scrimmage here and then and then blitz behind it. This is a, a play that uh, the Giants ran against us in preseason where they uh, take a guy from the line of scrimmage and kind of loop him around and bring, and bring another player out of the secondary uh, trying to blitz over here. And uh, we happen to have a, an inside run on and technically uh, Hunter, Hunter Henry's guy is the end man on the line of scrimmage, but uh, he sees a little bit of penetration inside and, and goes ahead and blocks the first guy that he sees. So, uh, that kind of gets Ramondre started here, and then uh, Mondre runs to an arm tackle, breaks outside, and, and it's all over here. So, um, really a, a good adjusted, a good adjustment by our offensive line here by Hunter, by David Andrews, uh, and as usual, a big block running behind uh, Big Mike on Wayne. He did a did a great job here, uh, you know, coming off on the linebacker. So this is JOK sitting here in the A gap, and, and see on the snap, he's going to kind of loop around on this blitz here to rush the quarterback, but. Uh, fortunately, we have a, a run called here, and uh, you can see Mike is at the point of attack. Hunter does a nice job of sealing the defense off, and uh, once once Mondre gets through the line of scrimmage, he's, he's a tough guy to handle. Yeah, that's a great point you bring up about Hunter Henry. You can see it better from the end zone, but, you know, the first guy that flashes, get him, and then gets him backside. Right. Okay. Just get, get Stevenson started. All right, first and ten here. All right, so it's an empty formation, and uh, Cleveland gave us a decent amount of empty uh, last year when we played them, and then and then again this year. So um, when the tight end moves in, uh, Bentley uh, moves up to the line of scrimmage here, and, and uh, after he blocks, then Bentley adds in. I think Bentley, so you can see Brissett here is trying to run a, a double move on Mills, so he, he gives a quick pump fake, and uh, you know Mills does a nice job here of uh, recognizing it, and just as he gets rid of the ball, um, uh, Juwan Bentley hits him, and I, I think it takes just a little bit off it, and, and uh, there's the interception. So, uh, really a, a, a nice play here by by Mills, but the pressure from Bentley, I think, definitely affected this throw a little bit, and and uh, and it kind of kind of knocked him out of these empty formations for the rest of the game. Absolutely, you talk about the experience with Mills too, and he was he was in his post game talking about, yeah, we go way back to when I was at LSU competing against Amari when he was at Alabama. He goes, so I know a little bit of the tricks going up against him. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. All right, so in the third quarter, we get a short yardage situation, and, and uh, we've been running the ball a lot on, on short yardage, and Cleveland, as we can see here, has really all 10 of their players uh, up here close to the line of scrimmage with just a single free safety back here uh, with Johnson deep. So uh, play action to Stevenson, and everybody's drawn up here, and that really leaves um, Hunter one-on-one -on -one here with Delpit. Uh, you see Hunter gives him, kind of gives him a nice uh, inside arm over move here, gives him a slip. Uh, Bailey puts it right out there on him and, and uh, goes in for the touchdown. So, um, you know, big scoring play for us here on a short yardage play. You know, nice to not only convert the short yardage here, but, uh, you know, That's get something you see throughout touchdown. the course of the week. Like, they're going to they're gonna play us this way in this situation. So, let's try and get something free backside there. Right. And, and they played very aggressively in the running game. We didn't have the success running the ball that we would like to have had, but uh, we all said some of that with the play action passes. So, uh, you know, in the end of production, in both areas was decent. Coach, good stuff. You'll hang tight. We'll be back with Bellistrator later in the show. New England hopes to continue their winning ways when they face the Bears. Dan Roach tells us that a scheduling change may provide an impetus. Right knee to the turf and another win for Zappi in his NFL career. They're back at 500. Get an extra day to prepare for the Bears. And as we wait to see who starts at quarterback, Bailey Zappi had a chance to reflect on being 2-0 as the Patriots' starting quarterback. For me, it's still surreal to be in this position and be in the NFL, be a quarterback in the NFL. I think I'll still always take advantage of every day and live this dream that you know I've had since I was five. Whoever starts at quarterback will be doing it on Monday Night Football. Three magical words to rookies and vets. Being a kid watching or watching Monday night games and any type of night football, it was always cool just to hear that theme song play. You know, it's kind of just cool. So I won't personally hear it on the field, but I know it's just being played, you know. It was always my dad letting us come watch it before our homework was done and my mom harping on us, you better get your homework done before you go watch football. But somehow we always uh, snuck away to go watch it with him. What your first memories of Monday night football going back to when 
you were watching it as a, as a kid. Just not always getting to finish the game. David Andrews remembers his first taste of playing on Monday night, and it was exciting, but also tiring. Played the Colts, and it's like 10.30, leaving halftime. I'm like, gosh, Lee, it's late. But uh, no, I mean, look, you think about Monday Night Football, the song, the opener, um, Hank Williams Jr. for me growing up, and uh, you know, it is, it's truly a you know, special, special thing. And for those newcomers to the Monday Night stage, it will be special. It's going to be awesome. Hopefully it's, it's good weather and it's going to be a great atmosphere. You know, we're going to have great, the fans will be out there screaming their heads off. So I'm looking forward to it. We all know now that Bill Belichick is tied for second with George Hallis for the most wins all time in NFL history as a coach. But did you know that Belichick is third all time in Monday night wins with 22? Andy Reid has 24, Don Shula 33. Hard to believe Bill's only third in Monday night wins. For Patriots All Access, I'm Dan Roach. All right, Roachy, thank you very much for joining me now as Patriots tight end Hunter Henry. How you doing? I'm doing well. Good, good, good. Let me ask you this right out of the gate. You're six weeks in. How's the offense? Offense is good, man. We're coming along, getting better each week and improving. I think that's the biggest thing. You get a better sense of the direction you guys are moving in? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're continuously learning, and I think if you're not, you're doing something wrong. So we're continuously growing um, and kind of communicating, mm -hmm. learning a lot from each other. Uh, so it's been good. I'm going to go back to the Cleveland game, the touchdown catch that you had. Do you ever remember being that wide open? I do not. It was, uh, it was a good scheme, man. <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it worked out perfectly just like we wanted. So uh, that was a nice one. Are you a routine guy? And what I mean by that is, you used to games being played every Sunday. Now this is a Monday night game. Do you have to change your routine, and, and how does that affect you? Um, not necessarily. I mean, honestly, it's kind of nice having an extra day. I oh, would really? say sometimes at this point, and you know, you'll catch up on the back end. You'll have less of a day next week. Um, but you know, it's nice having an extra day of recovery from a, a Sunday game. But I'm definitely a routine guy. But you know, you can always adjust. Good luck on Monday night. Hunter Henry, I guess we'll be back with more Patriots All Access right after this. Another award to legendary high school coach John DiBiasso of Catholic Memorial. Congratulations to Dibs, who is our high school coach of the week. The Scarlet Knights knocked off rival St. John's Prep last week for their 22nd consecutive win, dating back to 2019. Presenting the award is Patriots and Pro Hall of Famer Andre Tippett. It's my great honor to present this to coach. I want to say to you guys, good luck, keep pushing. It's a marathon, not a sprint. The Patriots Charitable Foundation will donate $1,000 to the Catholic Memorial High School football program in the name of John DiBiasso. It means a lot because it's a more a team award, award than an individual award. This goes to all my assistant coaches, uh, all of my players, and uh, of course my wife, who is my better half. Welcome back to Patriots All Access. Time to sit down with Coach Belichick after another win. Coach, congratulations on a win. Big win for you personally, too. We'll get to that later, but thoughts on the Cleveland win before we get to uh, the game against the Bears. Yeah, good team win. Um, you know, I thought we got contributions from all the units, and we played some complimentary football. So, um, you know, we go down and get the fumble on the punt. Uh, and Taekwon runs it in for a touchdown. Uh, got some turnovers on defense, fourth down stops, converted those into some points offensively. Um, could have had more points, you know, missed an opportunity in the opening drive there and had some penalties on offense that slowed us down, particularly in the first half. But eventually we were able to get the ball in the end zone and, and uh, played pretty good defense and, and made some plays in the kicking game. So uh, good, good win on the road. All right, you get the big win. The exciting thing is, all right, let's get back home. Let's watch the film. Buses are leaving the stadium. I feel the buses stop. And all of a sudden I see the team getting off the buses again. Why was it important to visit the Jim Brown statue for this football team? as you coach them? 
Well, I just uh, I thought it was good for us to see, uh, first of all, one of the greatest players that, that's ever played the game, and um, not just then his accomplishments as a player, but his uh, in personal life and, and what he's done for, I would say, generally in society and what he stands for as a man, as a person, um, that uh, maybe not all of our players know who he is or are totally familiar with him. I thought that was a good chance to just take a few minutes and, and uh, make sure that they all you know, read what's, what's underneath the statue and, and just see really the, uh, how big and imposing Jim is. One of the best to ever play. All right, on to the Bears Monday night football at home. Nothing better than playing on Mondays under the lights unless you like Sundays better. I personally <laughs> like Mondays. Um, the Bears, and it seems like this is a common thing. You had a connection in Cleveland, you know, going back to Detroit. Uh, your dad had connections. You mentioned going to the locker room. You remember that with the Bears. If I told a young Bill Belichick a long time ago when he was a kid going into that locker room that one day he'd be tied with George Hallis down the road, what would your thoughts be? Yeah, never believe it. Never uh, believe yeah, it. Yeah, never believe it. Yeah. Um, no, Coach Hallis was, uh, was a great man. Of course, was, you know part of the really beginnings of the National Football League and, and uh, had a great impact on the game and, and coached one of the players that my dad coached at Vanderbilt, Bill Wade, uh, to the 1963 NFL Championship before there were Super Bowls. And... Uh, you know, it's uh, that you think about the bear tradition and, and the bear football, yeah. tough defense, and Soldier Field, Soldier yeah. Field, yeah, a lot of a lot of mud, dirt, and you know, just just playing good, hard nosed, tough football. Mike Ditka's and Singletary and Walter Payton and all those guys through the years, going back to Nagurski and, and the guys they've had there. It's just that kind of a football environment. Um, uh, Butkus, you know. Yeah. Guys do commercials. That's my hero growing up, yeah. Dick Buckus, yeah. yeah Had so. birthday cakes with 51 on them. <laughs> Time now for the Twitter question of the week, and it comes from at K underscore love underscore three. The NFL sent a memo out like they're going to look at that closer. How do you convey that six games in? Here we are in the middle of the season, six games in, we're rolling. Do you have to teach things differently to the defense, or do you talk about these things each and every week as you progress throughout the season? Uh, well, in, in this case, because there's been no change in the rule, there isn't really anything to talk about. Um, we've always emphasized that rule uh, defensively, the target zone below the shoulders, above the knees in the pocket, uh, and outside the pocket below the shoulders, and the one-step rule and body weight and, body and all weight. the things that are part of it. So um, none of that's ever changed. A lot of times we'll see plays that we can use as examples and illustrations of yeah. what to do or what not to do, um, not just from our game, but from other games as we, as we watch them. We're always talking about those kind of things. And so um, I think there's a good awareness of it. And, uh, you know, we certainly want our quarterback protected. We want everybody else's, uh, you know, everybody else has the same protection. So um, we want to make sure that we don't do anything to violate that and, and give extra yardage to the offense. So, we'll, you know, there's always some close calls in there. And big, strong guys yeah. like you, you don't need a lot of protection. Poor Terry, poor Terry Bradshaw probably played 25 years. Terry's always complaining on, on Fox because you get the pictures of, uh, I don't know who it was from the Raiders, yeah. uh, picking him up and slamming him on his head. Manny Sistrunk yeah. or one of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you want to ask the coach a question, you have to follow the team on Twitter, at Patriots, hashtag at AskBB. You mentioned Justin Field and the Bears. What are we going to take a look at in the yeah, NFL Yeah, they're exclusive offensive players. All right, sounds good. More Patriots All Access will return right after this, and then we'll have the Bell Strader for you. Coming up on All Access. We travel to the Pacific Northwest for a unique look at Patriots receiver Kendrick Bourne. Seeing the kids and, and how I do affect them, make them smile, um, I inspire. So, you know, I want to see how many kids I can pull to shift that, you know, mind when I was at that age. I didn't think I was going to get much reaction, but it's pretty crazy, so success for sure. <laughs> You're watching Patriots All Access. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Putnam Investments. Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots, proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off. By Pepsi, Patriots watching better with Pepsi. And by Dan O'Brien Auto. Come in to any Dan O'Brien Auto Group store today and get your awesome protection plan, keeping it awesome. This player profile is brought to you by Pepsi. His on-field contributions on Sunday don't jump off the stat sheet. Just one catch for 17 yards before leaving the game with an injury. Welcome back to All Access, presented by GEICO. 
Kendrick Bourne is a lot more than just stats. His personality is infectious, as anyone, including his teammates, will attest to. In this episode of Do Your Life, presented by Putnam, we spent some time with Bourne in his hometown of Portland, Oregon this spring to try to get to learn more about the receiver. Okay, yeah, that's right. what you want to say? Okay, you know I don't play, but the kid, I get it every day. I'm so blessed, I don't got to stress. I just bought my mama cream, but she says I'm you the best. Now when they sleep in their room, now they really get rest. I'm like, yeah, that's all out of love. And I do it for my family, because it's from the man above. He make me do everything. Uh, cloudy, but uh, I guess you can't, you know, you can't love the sunshine if you don't love the rain. So I kind of, just where I grew up and just appreciating where I grew up. I think people are very kind here. Um, it's a lot of, a lot of motion. Um, it's kind of not, not too fast. The city's growing slowly, but, but surely. So um, just a lot of, a lot of growth I see. Boston is boom, like fast speed, like always moving. I felt the love, man, and to get the fans to support me and, you know, help me get get better every day. Like, just grateful for it. And, and they are the best fan base I've experienced so far. <laughs> I was stealing really bad in high school, man. Stealing from the mall, stealing from school, everything, man. Just, just in the bad, the bad crowd, man. The wrong, the wrong friends, and, and just being influenced heavily by that. So, I just like, bro, it's time to make a change. Like, you know what I mean? I'm trying to play football. Shoot, 12 years ago, I was working in a warehouse, um, getting phone calls from my mother about uh, my younger brother stealing from Fred Myers. You know, going to jail, and uh, she's gonna have to bail him out. And, um, shoot, I went and beat him up a little bit while he was younger, while, uh, while all that stuff was going on. He went through his trials in his life and stuff like that, so, you know, he knows that he, he's been through it, so he knows what to help me avoid, like, and that's the biggest thing, he just helping me avoid hiccups in the road, like, that's all it is, and he can't do it for me, but he can tell me, you know, his experiences and what he's been through. So we supported him through everything, college, uh, you know, the, his last his senior year, we made it to every single game just showing him how important it was for him to stay on track and that, you know, we're, we see him. We see that you're doing good. We see that you're trying your hardest to do this and we're gonna be there to support at all times. Looks a little different, doesn't it? What? Yes, bro, it's like not. Trying to remember, bro. Bro, this is crazy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, bro, keep balling, bro. Keep balling, facts, bro. Nice to meet y'all. Why is nobody in class, bro? <laughs> Where's the guy? Yeah. What's up, kid? I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. Kendrick Bourne, professional football player, Milwaukee grad. To see him here today is just wonderful. And to see my students with their smiles and get all excited, and it's just. It's made my day. Crazy Hi, Kiddo, Hi, how welcome doing? back. I missed you. Happy St. Patty's Day. Tom Kiddo, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. It's kind of like almost surreal, like seeing the kids and, and how I do affect them, make them smile. Um, I inspire, so you know, I want to see how many kids I can pull to shift that, you know, mind when I was at that age. I didn't think I was going to get much reaction, but it's pretty really crazy. So success for sure. <laughs> I love uh, music, man. I grew up actually in church, you know, with, with music. Uh, I used to play the drums while my dad played the keyboard. My mom used to sing. Oh, all right. That's how it looks. It's a nice studio. What's up, bro? You guys ready to be famous? What's up, bro? What's going on, bro? Chilling. Where we at? Chilling. They got a bunch of guys' signatures and albums right here. This is where we vibe out. You know, I make my sounds and um, I kind of changed up my sounds, man. I'm making a lot of more positive music. Music is kind of that emotional roller coaster. I want to be powerful, so I want to help people. Cause the Lord bless me, so I 
ain't gonna be selfish, I ain't just gonna keep it. You know I'ma share it, it's so apparent. One more time. Troubles on my neck, I got troubles on my back. Yeah, you know I represent. Yeah, you know I think I music as a whole for all every you know everybody is is huge. It changes moods. It um, does a lot for people, man. It, um, just to be able to make my own music is, is an honor in itself. And I just want to even influence other people to, you know, live better, do better, and feel better. What's up, y'all? It's KB here, man. I was able to buy my parents a house, new crib, man. I got them a mansion, so it's pretty. Oh, am I locked out? Let's get it, man. What's up with you? No, you ain't got to. I keep you out of that thing. All white. I'm feeling godly. What's up, huh? We're on YouTube today. Oh, oh gosh. We're on YouTube today, checking out the house. We don't know if we're going to get it yet, though. What? Wow, a French already. Yeah. I was trying to surprise them, but they were kind of on to it. What do you think? Welcome, sweet home. This time. <laughs> Where'd you get this at? Why are you trick me like that? Uh, they were excited, man. My mom was just overwhelmed with joy, and uh, that was my biggest thing, is to bring them joy. I'm very grateful, you know what I'm saying? Thank God uh, he put me in this position. Um, nothing without him, but uh, shout out to my family and Patriots, you know, helping me expand my life, expand my career, and uh, it's been a great ride, so I'm just trying to keep going, finish on the right foot in my life. Welcome into the Social Media Minute, I'm Tamara Brown. For the Browns game, Patriots fans joined together and started the hashtag WinForAlex on social media. Alex Hamsey is an officer who died in the line of duty in Bristol, Connecticut, who was a huge Pats fan. If you're coming to the game on Monday night versus the Bears, there will also be a moment of silence in his honor. Shockwaves went through the internet when Robert Kraft donated $50 million to Massachusetts General Hospital. The donation was the largest of its kind in hospital history and will help boost health equity in minority communities. Last week, in support of raising awareness for World Homeless Day, Patriots players went to Pine Street Inn to donate coats and also essentials for the homeless community. That's all for this week's Social Media Minute. I'm Tamara Brown. Welcome back to Patriots All Access. Time now for the Bellistrator. Quick look, Bears Monday Night Coach. Start with their offense. What do we got here? Well, they've got some very explosive players here. We'll start with Herbert, the running back, and they've got a couple good backs and, and obviously a very athletic quarterback. So uh, this is last week's game, Thursday night game against uh, against Washington, and Herbert takes the toss play out here and uh, makes a really a you know a couple of nice moves to avoid some tackles and uh, good strength, good contact balance here to you know run through a couple arm tackles. Now cuts it back against the grain, uh, makes another you know makes another slick move here, picks up his blocking. Uh, and, and turns it into a big run. You notice down here at the bottom of the screen, here comes a guy yep. right here uh, to try to get into the blocking, and that would be Fields, the quarterback. So oh. talk about speed. Wow. Yeah, he's moving pretty fast. We'll I get to him that, later. Okay. <laughs> thought that was a receiver for a second. Okay, you mentioned two good backs. There's one right there. Yep. To the next one. Yep. Uh, so this is Montgomery, uh, empty formation. So. Uh, they like this, you know, with uh, Fields in the backfield. So he just whips it out to Montgomery. And again, some more good running here from Montgomery. Um, you know, picks up his blocking, cuts back. And strong runner, good ball security. Good ball security. See Minnesota trying to strip the ball out here. Uh, so they have, uh, you know, a good group of receivers, good group of backs. And, uh, and then we'll get to... Uh, fields here, and this is really where the fun starts. So, um, very fast, very athletic, kind of, uh, you know, Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson type of guy, uh, big like Jackson. Um, and so, if we don't contain him on the pass rush, then he's got the speed and athleticism to get outside. Uh, he's not really, you know, necessarily looking to run out of bounds. You know, here he is, cuts back, again, makes, breaks the tackle out there in the open field, still cuts back, uh, not looking to, not really looking to slide or, or go out of bounds um, unless, the, unless the journey's over. 
He's, he's looking to make yards. That's that's quintessential Ohio State type play right there. Yeah. That's what he did in college. Right. Yeah. And even here at the end, you know, putting his shoulder down, trying to trying to pick up a couple extra yards. Uh, it's a tough kid that's fast and, and strong and really can, you know, run for 40 or 50 yards on, on virtually any play. Um, here's another example against the Texans. Another pass play that turns into a turns into a long running play. And here he goes. Wow. Back and forth and down the sideline. That's part of the problem you have. Like, we're going to play him zone. We're going to play him man. We're going to mix it up. we got to keep him guessing. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's, you say, oh, we'll just put a guy on him. Spy him, right? Everybody's yeah. Like, who? We got the <laughs> who, yeah. Who's got him? So he's. Carl Davis. <laughs> yeah. He's got a lot of a lot of speed and, and a lot of athleticism to run. And, and he's still got to cover the receivers down the field, too. So. Right. Um, very explosive team. A couple, you know, some big plays in the running game, especially from the backs and quarterbacks. So, okay, good big to be challenge. Good to be back home Monday Night Football. Good luck. All right, thanks. So. All right, there you go. More Patriots All Access will return right after this. Thanks for watching the Bell Street. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Putnam Investments, Putnam Investments, and the New England Patriots. Proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off. By Pepsi. Patriots watching better with Pepsi. And by Dan O'Brien Auto. Come into any Dan O'Brien Auto Group store today and get your awesome protection plan. Keeping it awesome. Welcome back to Patriots All Access, everyone. I'm Bob's Discount Furniture Studios with Mike Reese and Paul Perillo. They're 3-3. Three and three. You guys both picked them to beat Cleveland. Thoughts on the game? I thought it was another one of those really good team wins where, uh, you know, a lot of complimentary things happened. I thought the defense, again, Mike, continues to play well, taking the ball away, uh, making life a little bit easier on the offense. And, and Bailey Zappi, you know, right, yeah. taking, a, taking a, I think, a, a really significant step forward, much bigger part of the offensive success this week. Yeah, the thing that stands out to me is how defensively they took away the number one rated run, rushing offense in the NFL and the Patriots' ability to look at the opponent and say, this is what you do well, mm -hmm. and we have the pieces to limit that. And maybe you help us by taking the ball out of Chubb's hands. I thought the coaching matchup also was in favor of the Patriots. But uh, to me, that's a great part mm -hmm. of this Patriots team's growing identity, the ability to do that. Paul mentions Bailey Zappi. Are we at the point now where we seriously consider having a quarterback? <laughs> I'm telling you, I think, Controversy. I think we're to the point where it, it can be a conversation. I, and, I, and frankly, Steve, I didn't think we were at that stage after the Lions game. I thought for the most part, he was handing the ball off and staying out of the way. Well, this week, Cleveland did the exact same thing that the Patriots did. They took yeah. Ramondre Stevenson, for the most part, out of the game. I mean, 98 yards rushing for the yeah. Patriots, uh, well under four yards a carry. But, you know, Bailey Zappi was there to respond. And, and when they were prepared to do something different, and Bailey Zappi thrown for 309 yards, spreading it around, what, five different guys, Mike, with four, four catches? I mean... That's the stuff that, uh, you know, a, a guy that used to play here used to do. Like, mm -hmm. keep everybody happy. Four pass catchers with 60 yards receiving or more for the first time since 2017. So the spread the ball around philosophy that Paul talks about. Here's the conversation to me. Bailey Zappi has shown that he can be capable and you can win games with him. I still think he's keeping the seat warm for Mac. However, at what percentage is Mac? Mm -hmm. To me, that's the conversation. Right. If Max says, hey, I'm at 80, 85, and Bill Belichick says, well, I want to wait till you're 100. Like now, yeah. to me, that's the conversation because Bailey Zappi has shown you, he can, you can win games with him playing quarterback. All right, so let me go here. I think Mac is expecting to play on Monday night. And if that, isn't the, if that is the case where he is expecting to play, he himself is expecting to play. What do the Patriots do? If he's ready to play then I think Mac Jones plays. I agree with the way Mike put it. I still think Mac Jones is the starter, but I, I do think there's other factors now that maybe would have been lesser um, maybe two weeks ago than they are now. They've played a certain way mm -hmm. with Bailey Zappi, playing to the defense, right? And don't make mistakes. If you get in a compromising position and you need the offense to lead you back and win the game, can Bailey Zappi do that? Possibly, but, but you don't know but that. you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know based on last year, 
when Mac Jones was 10 and 7. Do you think this is fair, Paul? That Mac could do that. If he falls behind? If he falls behind. I don't have that face. This is why, to me, it's a conversation. We're not talking about Tom Brady is hurt and he's got this track record of success. Mac Jones is basically a 500 quarterback mm -hmm. in his time here. And to Mike's point, when the script was not Patriots get the early lead, play from in front the whole way, they struggled, especially down the stretch against good teams. So I don't think you're going back to that established guy. I think Mac Jones is the better option, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's a no-brainer. Bears or Jets? Uh, I would say Bears. The, the sooner, if Max 100% and he's ready to go, I think you get him right back in there. I agree. Okay, prediction time. What do you got against the Bears? Yeah, I, no, I, I don't like the Bears in this one. Steve will be happy again. 27-6. <laughs> I, I just don't wow. think there's, there's really not much offense there. Um, stunning stat. Uh, Justin Fields has thrown the ball 115 times, the fewest in football, been sacked on 20% of his dropbacks. <laughs> Uh, which is a, just an, an astounding number, by far and away leads the league. You mentioned the low pass attempts for the Bears. You go back to the 82 Patriots for the last team <laughs> that had the fewest uh, pass attempts um, up to that point in the league. Patriots, 31-13. So they go above 500. Yes. All right. Great job as usual. That'll do it for this week's edition of Patriots All Access. For Mike Reese and Paul Perillo, I'm Steve Burton. Have a great week, everybody.